Hey, this is Stephanie. And this is Chris. And welcome to our story. And today we got a really exciting thing, one of my favorite subjects to talk about, the fire movement. Yeah. I didn't know anything about the fire movement, honestly, until uh, maybe the last, what, five years or so. Uh, when we started the fire movement, um, nobody was doing it in our area, and I'm not even 100% sure if it was that popular. What do you think? Yeah, when we started out, it was simply about just becoming debt free mm -hmm. and just having a greater control over our financial situation. Yeah. You know, I've been in Ireland for 20 years. When I first came in, you know, I saw the opportunities there. You know, I, they made available to me to have a 50% pension after 20 years mm -hmm. and to be able to invest, invest in the drift savings plan. Mm -hmm. So I always had it in the forefront of my mind that I wanted to be uh, financially literate and financially secure. But when they actually put a name to it, it kind of gave, it kind of empowered us a little more to kind of go deeper into this journey. Yeah, we were like, oh, that's what we were doing this whole time. We had no idea. But yeah. the first thing I want to talk about, and it's a must, no matter what, is paying down debt early, as soon as you possibly can. I remember when we first started, uh, Krishan had a really good idea. He's like, hey, I know you got all this debt. So I came in with uh, student loan debt. I had car debt. I had credit card debt. You know, I had medical bills that I had any kind of debt you could think of. I came in with it and I felt super overwhelmed. And Krishan was like, hey, uh, I can, you know, this is how you feel better about all your debt is you pay down the smallest bill first. Mm -hmm. And he said, when you pay down the smallest bill first, then, you know, it feels like you're doing something. And I'm like, oh my God, it's amazing. It's just the smallest piece of advice. It seems insignificant. But when I started paying down that debt, just like one bill after a time, just getting one bill out of the day, one bill out of the way. And before you know it, I had like one bill left, which was my student loan mm -hmm. debt. And I've been debt free now, personally, I've been debt free for about a little over 10 years. And Krishan, you can tell him your story. He was debt free before we even met. So yeah, I was very fortunate. You know, when I got overseas, when I deployed with the army to Iraq, I had some great mentorship. They were all really financially savvy. And they pulled me to the side like, hey, listen, you can go back to the States. You can take all your savings and you can buy yourself a nice car or you can enjoy your time or you can make that. You can let that money work for you. Yeah. So when I went back, Everyone was buying all kind of nice new trinkets. I paid my car off. I paid off whatever the debt I had, and I put the rest of the money in a, in a, a CD. So I had that money later on to kind of invest in other things. Um, like I say, the TSP was also great because I put the money in there, and over time, as I got more rank in the Army, I didn't even notice the money was coming out because I was I had been doing it so long. And then it's like every time I open it up, it's a brand new surprise. Like, oh, wow, there's some more money in there, you know? Can so, you tell them a little bit about it, though? Is it called the Drift Savings Plan or is yes. that what they used to call it? Yeah, it's called the Drift. We call it a TSP in the Army, the Drift Savings Plan. It's, and what it, is it's it? It's just like a 401k plan. Okay. Um, now some of the newer soldiers who are coming in, the Army even matches a portion of that. But, you know, the old dogs like me, you know, we're doing it one dollar at a time. You know, what we put in there is what we're going to get out of there in the long run. But I'm, I've been extremely fortunate to have been put in some amazing situations around some amazing people oh, yeah. to guide me in the right way to make sure that I was able to take part in this because like she said we didn't know anything about the fire movement. I think we were no. watching um I think it was Good Morning America or something, something. like that yeah. and they ran a um they ran a feature on it and so we decided to go on YouTube and Google and we found more people people other people who were doing it right and then it's for me it's always better to have a technical name associated with what you're doing because you, yeah. you can Google it and you can find more information. And we, we researched, you're like, wow, this is what we're already doing. You know, but to see other people walking in that same direction, yeah. it kind of empowered us a little more. Because, you know, although we love our jobs, you know, mm -hmm. Stephanie's... Told you to turn off. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead on and start this off by saying I asked Krishan to turn his phone off and I even said, hey, do you have your phone turned off? He was like, yeah, 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 I got it. And he don't never had dang thing turned off. That was my fault, I apologize. <laughs> I physically turned the ringer off, but Google's, I mean, you, yeah. iPhone's doing something strange now where it says, suddenly more on, just say on and off, please. Just okay. make it easy. So, All right. <laughs> I'll, I'll take the hit on that one. Yeah, but so what, where, where were we? What I was saying was, it's <laughs> always. I think it's, it's really helpful that when you know the technical term to something, because then you can go out there, you can Google it, and you can find out more information. And even though, you know, we don't necessarily want to let our jobs go because we, right. we love what we do. We, oh, yeah, we do. absolutely. You know, I'm a very competitive person, so 
being able to go to work and have that competitive outlet is helpful. Stephanie is a very social person. So oh, yes. for her to be able to go to work and, and socialize with somebody other than me because I'm kind of it's a dry needed. person. You know, yeah, much it needed. Out. Yeah. So. I can tell you one thing for sure. The fire movement specifically fits Krishan because I thought I was a penny pincher. But not till I met Penny Pincher Jr. over here. I mean, he, he knows how to save a dollar. I remember when we met, we went out on our, for our first date and he had this Oldsmobile and it was like a golden color and it was old and you could tell. And uh, when the date was over, um, I walked him back to his car and we were saying our goodbyes and I looked down in the driver's side and he had leather seats, but in the driver's side, <laughs> It was like torn completely, like the leather was like torn completely off the seat. And I was like, what's going on here? And he was like, oh, you, his, you could tell he's a little bit embarrassed. Uh, he was like, oh, I'm gonna go get that fixed. And you can tell him exactly how you fix it. He didn't fix it by buying a new car, how'd you fix it? I took it down to an upholstery <laughs> place and they reupholstered all the seats because there was nothing wrong with that car. <laughs> It ran just fine. It lasts what another five, six yeah, years? It did until it um until I went to the grocery store one day and it pretty much didn't crank up and I had to call him. I'm like, hey, I'm stuck at the grocery store. Let's get rid of this car. Yeah. But don't you think that that is a much needed skill mm -hmm. when you want to retire early? Can you tell us about why that's so needed? It's it's important because you can only spend money once. You know, there I, t I tell I tell my daughter, I tell my daughter that any light that you see out there, any advertisement has been specifically designed oh, yeah. to separate you from your money. You got it. So by default, <laughs> it is my job to find ways to not be separated from my money. Right. So to have that skill to see the value in the things that you already have right now, as opposed to running out and having the next new thing, it's great value in that because when I, I look at it like this, when I go out there and I make that, when I bring my paycheck into the house, I bring that in for the value of to, the, to to further my family, mm -hmm. to put us in a better situation. Okay. And I have a beautiful wife who I love dearly. Thank you, dear. And one day I <laughs> want to put her in a situation to where she no longer has to worry about anything, even in my absence. So that's why I think it's important. It's super important to manage your money well. I did want to make one more point on just from my perspective is, you know, we're talking about being in the military, right? So we're active duty military family. <laughs> we're part of the fire movement. We didn't know it at that time, <laughs> but you know, now we know we're part of the fire movement. And you know, there are some challenging challenges that come along with it. And I just wanted to say for sure, being a military spouse is extra difficult because, you know, when we're trying to invest, we're trying to save that money, we're trying to put back, I have to start over every three years. So in active duty, if you don't know anybody who's in the military and you, or you haven't lived that life yourself, basically every three years, the a military service member has to move on to a different base or a different location. Well, about every three to six years. You know? <laughs> yeah, three to six years. We've just been unlucky. Ours has been just about every well, three years. Lucky and unlucky all at the same time. You know, that, I've had that's true. Some, we've been to some amazing places. Yeah, who knows but, what's good or bad. Yeah. But yeah. what I wanted to add was just that layer, right? So there, there's a little bit layer of difficulty there because I have to quit my job and I have to get another job and then that mm -hmm. space in between where I could be in investing and saving um, is that I'm not able to do that. So it just adds another layer of difficulty. Successfully, we've been able to just pick right back up and Gosh. we've been very yeah. thankful for that. And that's true and it brings to mind, I mean, you, in this fire moment, you have to have a partner who's on board. I mean, you have to have, it's a joint venture. Yeah. You know, yes. of course, I've done some things that has put us in some, a, a good situation and Stephanie has done some things that have put us in a great situation and together we're going to probably be financially free and you know about two years we'll be in a position oh, to yeah. where we're working because we want to go to work yeah. as, a because, as opposed to going to work because we're financially obligated to do so yeah. you know and, and that's our ultimate goal is to wake up in the morning and say hey listen I'm going into this job because I choose to go right I don't have to go mm -hmm. but I choose to go there yeah absolutely so I, I just do have one question if you said if, if I ask you okay from one to ten how difficult has this been to kind of stay on this path of potentially, you know, you know, just, you know, being able to have enough money to retire if you wanted to? We don't. But that's a good question because, you know, initially I would say that it was really hard. You know, it was a shock yeah. to the system, you know, not going out and going on that 
seven thousand dollar cruise, you know, <laughs> yeah. or not taking that flight to Vegas this year oh, because yeah. we wanted to have a little extra money go to this investment or that right. investment. So I say initially it was pretty hard. I would say about a seven or eight. Okay. But as we got down the road, as as we as the goal itself mm-hmm. kind of became the the number one op- the number one priority then it became easier because we were both were focused on the same thing as opposed to saying, hey, I want to go to Vegas. I want that new car. So it oh, yeah. became easier easier over time. And I will say it's it's pretty difficult because, you know, I think about a, a new pair of shoes. I want a new pair of shoes or a new watch, and it, it is pretty difficult. But I think we have to think about it not in the short term, right? Mm-hmm. We have to think about it in the long term. Yeah, I agree. That's just having that foresight to know, okay, that, if I have, if I take this short-term sacrifice, I'll have some long-term success. Right. I think that's paid dividends for us because when I first saw that um, that Good Morning America video, oh, yeah. mm-hmm. I immediately went online. I was like, "Wow, that sounds great!" <laughs> and I looked for other military personnel who were doing the same thing. I'm like, "There's yeah. there's millions of us. Like, God, there has to be somebody out there who can put information on how they navigated this." This process, right. and they were very few. I mean, you saw some guys out there who were um, doing alternative living, where they were living out of their van right, to reduce, yeah. to reduce their that. overhead costs. But you know, Stephanie is a very adventurous person. She would love to do something like that, but unfortunately, I'm six foot five, and it ain't happening. It's not happening. There's not many <laughs> vans that have the, the roof height that I won't be able to stand up in it. And I'm not trying up. to be the hunchback of Notre Dame, <laughs> so. <laughs> and we have to be fair in this situation, yeah. right? So, and it just goes to show that I speak that there are some <laughs> positives and there are some negatives to this. You Absolutely, know? yes. The positives is that we get to put ourselves in a situation to where we can reap the benefits of our hard works for a very long time. Right. But the negatives to it is sometimes we don't get to to take part in some of the activities that our peers take part in. So. And I think what we're trying to say is that it's not impossible. It's something that you can do if you put your mind to it, but it's not going to be easy. Yeah. And like, it, it's going to be a challenge. Yeah. And like mm-hmm. I was saying, the reason why I'm putting this video out is because I want somebody who is in a similar situation, maybe a, somebody who is in the Army or the military mm-hmm. or some other branch or of service, anybody. Yeah. and say, hey, listen, it is possible. It is possible to take the money that you make as a service, service member mm-hmm. or as a military spouse sure. and, and be in the fire movement. Absolutely. I mean, it, it's a great movement to be in. I mean, there's a lot of people out there doing a lot of great things. And, mm-hmm. you know, when I was first coming to the Army, I had never heard of it. And to be able to be where I am now, I, Stephanie asks me all the time. She's like, hey, <laughs> did you see yourself here when you first joined all the Army? All the time. And I'm like, if you would have told me 20 <laughs> years ago that I'd be in the position I'm in right now, I would have called you a liar to your face. Oh, yeah. It's kind of hard to visualize sometimes, even though you want to visualize so hard. It's really difficult to visualize 10, 20 years down the road. So it's just nice we made it. You know, we're here and we definitely thank you guys for supporting our channel and, you know, just supporting what we do. It's very important to us. Did you want to add anything before we close out? The one thing I want to leave you with is a few things that you can do to put yourself in a position to where you can start the fire movement. Mm -hmm. Sit down with your with your spouse. Come up with a plan. Find out if you are are on the same page, if this is something that you want to do. Second, write down all your financial obligations right. from the law from the smallest one to the largest Largest, one yeah you know then call all of them identify the ones that are not circular Mm -hmm. means that you can if you can pay them off right now they are never coming back again that's right and start there start paying them off one at a time right and then so when you do that identify certain benchmarks right in where you're going to where you're going to celebrate like if you say i'm going to celebrate at 25 percent i mean celebration can just be a high five in the hallway as you're walking past each other <laughs> yeah. or going on a That's walk cute. at the local trail but yeah. try to schedule in some celebration because you're going yeah. to want to have those it's, it's, it's a long journey so you're yeah, going to want to have some places to where you can celebrate a little okay oh yeah absolutely um, lastly call people Lastly, call people who have done it before. Mm-hmm. See what, what they've done. You you, you, yeah. you you never know what you find out until you talk to people about best it. Best practices. Yeah. Yeah. Find out their best practices or their missteps. Oh, so yeah. do those three things and hopefully it'll, it'll help you out. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we appreciate all your support. And don't forget, do something nice for someone today and you can do it. And don't forget, we're just ordinary people. Doing extraordinary, extraordinary things. things. <laughs> See you later.